DJ Immortal, live in the mix. All right, Outlaw Radio Live fans, we are live with the legendary LA Kid from the legendary hip hop group, The Tough Crew. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What's going on? Oh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. I want to say I've been a fan of your music for a very long time. So, uh, Danger Zone was my favorite record, man. So, thank you so much for your contribution to hip hop. Man, I appreciate that. You know, that, that really means a lot. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, it says a lot. Uh, Danger Zone was probably, it wasn't our first project, but it was our first project that we had creative control over. And um, it was probably the most impactful project that we have to date. So, you know, that really says a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome. Um, So I have to ask you this, uh, kid. Um, So... What made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Uh, me, myself, personally? Uh, yes. Um, I kind of grew up in the music industry, honestly. My mom has been in the music industry uh, for the majority of my life. So she's been um, vice president of record companies, and she was a uh, senior at BMI for a while. So I was always kind of behind the scenes. You know, I, I kind of followed her behind the scenes thing. But as far as me wanting to rap, honestly, what made me want to rap was Ice Dog. I heard him rap, and it just kind of, you know, before that, honestly, I just wanted, I wanted to DJ. That was my thing. I wanted to be a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask, did you ever get a, did you ever get the chance to ever pursue uh, that, uh, like, to pursue DJing at all? Um, yeah, actually, I did quite a bit of DJing early. Um uh, as a matter of fact, I did some of the cuts on, well, I did the majority of the cuts on the Still Dangerous album. And um, uh, I think that's what really got me into the beat making process at that point. You know what I mean? It was kind of a cross between the two. So. And also, I have to ask, like, uh, you, so how did you and the rest of the Tough Crew get together? Like, how did you all meet? Uh, I met Ice Dog through a mutual friend. Uh, he told me that, you know, he knew a guy that rapped and all that, so we went around there and checked him out, and he was phenomenal, so I was like, yeah, he's definitely, you know, I definitely want to rap with this guy. Um, it was myself, Ice Dog, and we had another person who was in the group, uh, who actually named the group. He was a little older than us. He was from New York, but he was living in North Philly. Uh, his name is Easy C. And big props to Easy C, because Tough Crew was kind of, his dream, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, he had to leave the group and we carried it on, you know what I mean, for him and in, in, in honor and so forth. But, you know what I mean? Uh, before Tone Love, before Too Tough, it was Ice Dog, LA Kid, and Easy C. That was the original Tough Crew group. Uh, Tone Love came into the group a little bit later on into the picture and it was just like uh, a good chemistry. It was a perfect chemistry fit, you know what I mean? And Too Tough was just like the icing on the cake. So, you know, it just all came together, and it was a good chemistry. You know, everybody fit. Everybody played a role. Everybody played their position, and they played it well. well I, I agree with that, man. You guys were like a match made in heaven on, the, like, when you got all the group together. It's great to see that you guys yeah. are still together doing shows as well, man. It's After all these years, you guys are still uh, putting in work. Ah, uh, yeah, man. You know, we're trying to stay active. As a matter of fact, we, uh, we've we been working on a reunion album as well, um... Got quite a few songs in the works right now. Still haven't really decided what, which ones we're going to go with and which ones we're not going to go with. Um, might be a couple of leaks coming out here and there soon. Uh, but yeah, we're also working on a, 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 a reunion project as well. And also, way back in the day, the Tough Crew was also fan favorites on the groundbreaking Street Beat radio program on Power 99. Um, I have to ask you, what was the experience like being on that radio program and knowing you guys were fan favorites? Um, it was very different probably from my aspect because Lady D, who was the host and queen of Philly Hip Hop, um, was a very close friend of my family. And come to find out, we didn't find this out until way later on, but come to find out, she used to babysit me when I was a little kid. Like, her sister and my mom were best friends in high school, and it was just crazy, but... Um, just from the aspect of the respect of Philly, you know, the respect that we still get from Philly, from, from my part of town, for the Danger Zone album, you know, it's, it's, it's phenomenal, man. It's 
phenomenal. I live in L.A. now, but every time I go to Philly, it's like, you know, you just get treated like royalty, and I, I just so much appreciate it and love my Philly fans because I don't know if you know, but Philly is not an easy city to make. You know what I'm saying? Philly will break you, definitely. <laughs> if Philly don't like you, they'll let you, they'll let you know off top. You know what I mean? They don't pull no punches, bro. Believe me. Most definitely. I think the only uh, individuals that I know of that I've actually heard of from here in Canada that actually made it out of Philly, and I could be wrong, I know there's probably a lot more others, but the most well-known ones are you guys, the Tough Crew, and also uh, D- uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, now known as Will Absolutely. Smith. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Yeah, those guys, we all go way back. As a matter of fact, I went to high school with Will, um, myself, Will, Teddy B. Cool C, the whole Hilltop Hustler clique. We all went to high school together. That's that's crazy. I, that's, that's actually really cool to actually know. Like you actually got, you actually knew Will Smith before he was even Fresh Prince. Oh yeah, yeah. We all, I mean, we all knew each other when we were in the beginning stages. Actually, here I'll tell you a funny story real quick. We would see Jazzy Jeff all the time because Jeff was always DJing here and there, here and there. And Will was always with him, but Will was like more of his roadie, like, he would carry the records, like, nobody knew that Will rapped for a very long time, nobody knew how phenomenal that this guy was, you know what I mean, because he just, he was very humble and just kept it, you know, it was no big thing to him, you know, and he wasn't really trying to be out there and trying to be the star of the show, he wasn't really trying to be that, so he didn't really, you know, he didn't get into battles and things like that, and, you know, try to flex his talents and all that, you know, he was very humble with it, but. Nobody really knew how phenomenal this guy was. Man. I know I didn't, and I went to school with this guy every day. <laughs> <laughs> when you first heard Will rap, like, what, what was your first thought that came to your mind when you first heard Will rap out in Philly? Um, when I first heard Will rap, I heard him do Girls of the World or Nothing for Trouble. And I thought that, I, I knew it was going to be a radio hit. I mean, I knew that definitely. I figured the video was going to be something special. You know what I mean? I was like, well, I just saw a vision for it. I was like, wow. You know, I see where this guy is going with it. Um, it was totally different from what everybody else is doing in Philly. I can tell you that much. <laughs> it was totally different. You know what I mean? So a lot of people in Philly, I'll say a lot of rappers in Philly didn't really take to it well because it wasn't on a genre of music in which Philly was actually more known for. You know what I mean? But Will was doing his own thing. And, and you got to respect his hustle, man. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Also, this, I was going to ask this question later on, but since we're like on the topic of Will and uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff, uh, the Tough Crew were uh-huh. regular performers at the after, uh, sorry After Midnight Club in North Philly. Once, what, once it was the largest hip hop club in America. Uh, what was it like? Uh, what was it like performing there and competing against those two individuals? Um, we never really competed against them per se. Uh, my DJ, you know, was in the DMC competitions, and but we never really actually competed against Jeff and Prince. I mean, you know, we all kind of came up together. There was no real beef or even anything like that between us. Um, as far as performing at the After Midnight, I don't think, I mean, it was very big for us, but at the same time, it was still very local for us because that was pretty much in our neighborhood, you know what I mean? So we didn't really look at it as being the largest hip-hop you know, venue in America at that time. You know what I mean? We didn't look at it like that. It was like, yo, let's go do that after midnight. And then after that, we're going to go hang out and, we're, you know, go play some ball or, you know what I mean? We're going to yeah. the after hours and hang out. You know what I mean? It was more like that. We didn't really look at it as being as big as it was at the time. You know what I mean? But again, we were kids, man. We were kids. We were just having fun. We were just doing what we like to do. We had no idea that it was going to go to the plateau that it went to, honestly. You know, that, that really wasn't even a goal of ours. We just doing what we like to do. And I completely understand that fully when you say that about the um, After Midnight Club because it's in your hometown. You Even as a kid, you probably like drove your bike past it or something like that. You drive past it all the time, so it's still in your oh, hometown. Oh, yeah, man. We would, go, we would go past it every day. That, okay, that and Studio 4, which ended up being Rough House Records, um, was also within four blocks. I mean, all this was in our neighborhood. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was all within maybe six or eight blocks of other. You know what I'm saying? So we uh, we did a lot of we did a lot of recording at Studio Four. Um, got to know Chris Schwartz very well before the whole Rough House Records thing took off. As a matter of fact, he was in one of our early early videos. 
<laughs> Get if I can dig up, boy, if I can find that video now, <laughs> I'd probably could blackmail him right now with that video. But no, it was it was a great video, man. Chris was a great guy. You know, Chris is a great guy, and, and you know we go way, way, way back. So you know, um, it, it's a lot of history with Tough Crew and just Philly. You know what I mean? Definitely. And also, the Tough Crew was signed to So Deaf Records. Um. Wow, how did that record deal come to be for you guys? And what was it like actually working for that record label? Um, so Def Records was actually a record label of one individual, Tony Mitchell. He was pretty much the guy who put Tough Crew together. He's the one who, put, who brought Tony Love to the group. Um, and um, it was a different situation because, again, nobody really knew what we were doing. Um, as far as even Stone Death Records, they were brand new to this. You know what I mean? And honestly, I think that the record took off faster than the label expected it to, and they really didn't know what to do at that point. You know what I mean? Um, we were also, uh, Stone Death had a deal with Warlock, which, you know, was Adam Levy. We did have a deal with Warlock, and Warlock did a lot of pressing for us. But they did absolutely no promotion at all. No videos, no nothing. They did no promotion for the group at all. So, Tough Crew got, basically, Tough Crew was known on the strength of word of mouth, ear to the street. Um, honestly, I get a lot of people that were military that traveled around the world and carried Tough Crew tapes and CDs with them as they travel. You know what I mean? And, and, and it spread. So, you know, that's why I say when I hear people come back to me and say, oh, you know, Tough Crew, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing because we really had no idea that it was, you know, ever going to be to that extent, man. We were just like making songs for the neighborhood, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> See, when I actually, when I first actually heard about you guys actually was, um, this is actually a really funny thing. Um, my old stepdad, um, he was cleaning out his, uh, his basement when he was moving. And um, he had found this big, big box of just, like, records, CDs, uh, cassettes. And it was just filled with old-school rap. And he's like, he's an older guy, so he's like, I don't like this crap. You can have it. So I was like, well, I don't want it. Well, I, at first, I didn't know what it was. So I'm like, I don't want this box. Like, what the, what the hell is it? You know, it's laying in a basement. And it had, it had your Danger Zone record in it. had some fresh prints. It had all the old, old stuff. And I'm just like, so I'm like, well, actually, wait, I will take this. And that's when I first heard you guys, because I had the Danger Zone record. And I, and I got... I got hooked yeah. on it, man. You guys were just produced nothing but bangers that whole album. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like I can speak for everybody on that, and, you know, we really appreciate it. You know what I mean? We really appreciate that. Hey, man, you're most certainly welcome. And also another cool thing that I learned while I was doing my research, actually, uh, you and the Tough Crew uh, toured the U.S. as a support act for Two Live Crew. I'm going to have to ask you, what was it like actually being the support act for that group? And what was it like actually being on tour with them? Um, uh, that was probably one of a kind. One of a lifetime tour, that one was. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, two live crew. You can two live crew, those are some crazy guys. Love those guys to death, man. When, we first, when they first brought us to Miami, because my part of town was really big in Miami. And we did a lot of shows down in the Florida area and we, always took very good care of us, treated us like royalty every time we came down. Um, so he added us onto the tour. Um, at one point, Luke wanted to sign, I think he, he wanted to sign Tough Crew um, to his record label, but unfortunately it, it didn't pan out, you know what I mean? But the tour itself was amazing, man. We had so much fun. It, it was amazing. Um, opening up with those guys, touring with those guys. I mean, every every night was a different experience, but it was always fun. You know what I mean? We never had any any issues or any. I mean, we run into typical promoter issues and things like that, but that wasn't for us to worry about. Us as artists, we always just enjoyed ourselves and had fun. And, you know, like I said, we were young kids, man. It was an experience for all of us. And also, in 1988, the Tough Crew released my personal favorite al album called the Dan called Danger Zone. Um, I have to ask you, what's the inspiration by the, behind that iconic record, and what's the story behind it? Um, Danger Zone. I think Danger Zone was mostly put together by Ice Dog. Honestly, I think that was his baby. He uh, he did a majority of the writing on that song, as far as the lyrics. He did a majority. 
or any lyric writing on that song. Um, it was more or less, like I said, we were making songs for the neighborhood. We were making songs for and about Philly. You know what I mean? Specifically North Philadelphia because that's where he was from. But that's pretty much what the whole Danger Zone thing was about, the Danger Zone posse. You know what I mean? The Danger Zone mob squad. We had, You know what I mean? It, it, it all just came from the, the North Philly street feel because it was like no one was really tapping in on that. And it wasn't to glorify it. It was just to acknowledge it. You know what I mean? We weren't, we weren't actually glorifying, oh, this is what we're doing or this is what it is. No, we're just letting you know, hey, this is what's going on out here. You know what I mean? So I think that that more or less was just, as far as the data zone concept, it was just more or less Ice Dog speaking, you know, his experiences and, experience, and then Tone adding on to his experiences as well, just from different parts of the city. And what, what really brought stuff together is that we were all pretty much from different parts of the city. So we all had different stories to add, different experiences, you know what I mean? So it all came together real nicely. And also in the year 1991, you had the privilege of working with female artists called Keisha Jackson. Um, how did you and Keisha initially get connected? Wow, okay, well, Keisha Jackson, um, um, that was actually through the record label. My mom was, I think she was working A&R at MCA Records at the time, and Keisha was one of the artists that she was a and r And uh, Keisha was a very good friend of ours, you know what I mean? And she was doing a song, I did, I think I did a rap on her song. Yeah, I did, I did a rap on her song, uh, She's a phenomenal vocalist, by the way. You know what I mean? She, she's phenomenal. But, yeah, Keisha, she's a sweetheart. We go way back. As a matter of fact, I was there. Well, I wasn't there when she had her baby, but I was there shortly after she had her child. We were one of the first ones there when she had her baby. So we go way back as well. I have very personal ties with a lot of people in the music business. A lot of it has to do with and because of my mom, like Patti LaBelle and... Uh, Peter Marie, rest her soul, you know what I mean? She was like a godmother to me. So I, I have a lot of personal ties with major artists, you know what I mean, just because of my mother and her status and that type of situation. So my experiences might be a little different than what the rest of the groups are or, you know what I mean, from what, from what another artist may have been. And also, um, I have to ask you about, the, about uh, Keisha. Like, do, you, do you guys have any more plans to do any more uh, music in the future at all? Oh, I would love to. I would love to. I haven't um, actually been in contact with her recently. But I would love to, man, definitely. As a matter of fact, well, right now I can tell you what I'm working on. Um, I did some songs with Corrupt Up from Dog Pound a few years ago, and he's back in the studio now. So we're collaborating, putting some stuff together right now for his new project. Um, so I'll definitely let you know how that's what, how that turns out. Almost oh, definitely, man. And um. So I have to ask you, like, I actually saw a video on your Facebook recently. Um, it was actually you rapping, like, kind of like freestyling to a beat. Um, and, like, I have to ask you, like, is that one of your newest songs off the newest Tough Crew record that you were doing? Nah, nah, nah. I mean, sometimes I just get in my little zones. and I mean, I have a lot of solo material as well that I have not released, really, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just what I feel, or sometimes it's just, you know, sometimes it's just ideas that I have. Not everything is Tough Crew, but... Me as a producer, I also just don't produce tough crew music. You know what I mean? I do tracks for everybody. So with that in mind, you know, I do a lot of different songs. Uh, tough crew is just one entity, but that is my priority, my first and foremost. You understand? And oh, that's actually my next question: Was you actually into producing? I have to ask you: Who have you? Who are you currently producing for right now? And uh, can we expect any of those projects anytime soon? Well, yeah, like I was saying. Um, the most recent that I'm working on right now, I'm working with Corrupt right now. Uh, he's doing a new album. He just got a new deal, I think, with Universal, if I'm not mistaken. And um, he's working on a project. Um, also, I have a couple of artists of my own that I'm working with. Uh, we have an artist named Black Montana, who is from Alabama. Uh, and he's got a totally different sound. Um, I've got a couple of artists. I've got South and Lee. I've got Bandana. I got a couple of producers that I'm working with right now. Just you know, I, I have a camp in training right now, and in a minute I'm gonna go ahead and just go on and release them on the world. I just you know what I mean. I'm right now. I feel like I'm training. You know, how it's like like you're training for a fight. You're oh, training exactly. a fighter for a fight. That that's 
where we're at right now. I got my guys in training, so in a minute I'm gonna throw them in the ring and see what they can do. Almost definitely gotta get that build up going. You gotta get that build up. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And also during the recording of uh, the Tough Crew's fourth album called Still Dangerous, you guys were joined by Smooth K and DJ Cuts. Uh, sorry, Cutsology. Uh, what was it like working with those mm-hmm. two? Uh, Smooth K is like a little brother of mine. He was actually one of our dancers uh, in the earlier Tough Crew album. Um, and he did a solo project. Uh, he played it for me one day. I played it for the record label one day, and they were like, yo, this kid is pretty good. So, you know, we had some inner problems within the group, uh, and Tone ended up leaving the group. DJ Tutuff ended up leaving the group. So, at that point, um, we were, we weren't going to do a Tough Crew album anymore after that, to be honest with you. The only reason why we did the last Tough Crew album was because the record label begged me to do another album. So I did the last album. Luke Kay was part of the album. He's phenomenal. That, that guy is awesome. That's, also, I'm working with him right now as well. Um, I just reconnected with him recently, and I sent him a bunch of stuff, and he recorded some new stuff as well. So um, I'm going to do, I'm probably going to do a compilation album called LA Kid Presents, and all of these artists that I'm working with are going to come out from this album just as an introduction. So but I'll keep you posted on that as well. Well, that sounds like a really, really good idea, man. You know, LA Kid Presents. I think that would be great. It's a great way to uh, showcase all the individuals you are working with all at once, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Just throwing them all in for a Battle Royale match, you know? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, just it's kind of like uh, I'm promoting a big all my fighters at once, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> So, also, on January 19th of this year, you and the rest of the Tough Crew performed at the All Stars of Hip Hop concert. I have to ask you, what was that experience like sharing the stage with all those different uh, individuals? Also, if you can, uh, do you have any other shows available that you'd like to tell our listeners about that you that you have coming up? Um. Okay, I will talk about the last show. The last show that we did, uh, January 19th, it was in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It was freezing outside, if I'm not mistaken. It was snowing outside, but the turnout was phenomenal. Everybody from New York, Philly, Delaware, New Jersey, I mean, they came from all over, you know, to come to this event. It was a phenomenal event. And um, as far as performing with all of the groups and all of the old school guys and all the guys that we know from way back, it was like a house party backstage, I can tell you that. It was like a reunion, you know what I mean? It was like a big hip hop reunion backstage because everybody knew each other, hadn't seen each other in so many years, or you know, it was just great. It was just good to see a lot of the old gang, a lot of the old faces, a lot of the old friends, and it was just phenomenal. But I, I wanted to thank everybody who came out to that show because the turnout was phenomenal. It was great. And also, I have to ask you, um, LA Kid, what's um. As for like you know working with corrupt and your other your other new artists and whatnot, um, what's next for you? Is there anything else you want to promote while we still have you on the air? Um, anything else? Um, other than working with my new artists, um, like I said, I am in the midst of doing the Tough Crew reunion album. Uh, I do have ninety percent complete a and a solo Ice Dog album. I've been holding that, sitting on that for a while, but yeah, me and Ice Dog have collaborated. He's doing a solo album. Um, so I got quite a few things in the works right now. You know what I mean? I've got a couple of R&B artists that I'm working with right now as well. Um, got a couple of things in the works. So like I said, just, just look out for the LA Kid Presents logo. You'll see it, and when you see it, you'll say, hey, that's, that's another one of his groups right there. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to ask you, uh, kids, so this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that comes on my show. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever you want to give shout-outs to. And also your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you if they're not already doing so. Okay, wonderful. Um, I want to first give a shout-out to you and your crew, man. Thank you for having me. You know, I really appreciate the opportunity. I love and, and respect uh, the love and respect that you give back. You know what I mean? Thank you for having me. Um, I want to definitely thank the listeners. Definitely want to thank the listeners. Foremost, the fans, because without the fans, you know, there's nothing, honestly. You know what I mean? And have such loyal fans after so many years. You know what I mean? 
mean, that 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 says a lot, you know what I mean? Um, and Chuck T does really have some loyal fans. I definitely want to thank the fans. Um, there's been so many instrumental people who played roles in, in the in the career of Chuck T. Um, especially Lady D. She was one, like I said, she she made Chuck T. And Philly. You know, without her, you know, we would have been caught up in the shuffle. But she was always there for us. So definitely, much love to her and whole Power 99 crew who no longer in existence, but love those guys, man. They know who they are. Um, you know, everybody, man. This is, I just, I'm very grateful and thankful for everyone who even shows love and remembers stuff too. And they hear my part of town. They, if you still dance or you still move to my part of town, that, that means a lot to me. I appreciate it every bit of it. And I want to uh, ask you, if you can, uh, can you probably provide your social media handles? That way our listeners can follow you if they're not already doing so. Oh, yes, absolutely. I am on all media, L-A Kid, L-A-K-I-E-D-310. You can catch me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, all of those. L-A Kid 310. That's me. Look me up. I'm right there. Also, you can go to my... Um, SoundCloud. I'm, I'm periodically posting things in my SoundCloud, LA Kid 310. But we also have a tough crew SoundCloud you can go to. I'll be leaking some stuff on there periodically. So definitely check me out. Check us out. We're still in effect. Tough crew still rolling. Most definitely. I want to say, LA Kid, thank you so much for coming up on Outlaw Radio Live. It was an absolute honor and a privilege to have you on the show, man. I hope you have yourself a wonderful week, and I'm looking forward to your new projects. Thank you so much for having me, man. Much love to you. Much love. You're most certainly welcome.